Tene ari chuto me chinte le den tsong chung ge tsong tsuk ushe Michael McCall chogi sung shen thank you may I ask honorable chairman of the house foreign affairs committee representative Michael McCall to address the gathering Tashi Delay. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. And I want to thank the members of the delegation. I also want to thank uh, my beautiful wife, Linda, for being here as well. Thank you, Linda. I also want to thank the, uh, the school children who performed. That was absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. And it demonstrates what, why we have to keep the Tibetan culture alive and well. Let me just say it's an honor to be here today and to lead this bipartisan delegation from the United States Congress to meet His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. Like many of you, I wish this meeting was happening in your homeland of Tibet. But you were forced to flee 65 years ago after the Chinese Communist Party annexed Tibet and slaughtered tens of thousands of innocent Tibetans. The CCP was determined to end the Tibetan culture and forcibly bring the Tibetan people under their control. To save his people and his culture, his Holiness led more than 80,000 of his followers on a perilous journey, 4,000 kilometers through the Himalayas to safety. They left behind their homes, their friends, and even some of their family, all with the hope of preserving their way of life for future generations. Thanks to the kindness of the Indian people, His Holiness and his people are able to live freely here and practice their religion without fear of persecution. But it is still my hope that one day the Dalai Lama and his people will return to their home in Tibet in peace. <laughs> Decades later, the Chinese Communist Party continues to threaten the freedom of the Tibetan people. And they have even in attempted to in insert themselves into the secession of the Dalai Lama. But we will not let that happen. Even after the violence and forcible removal from his homeland by the CCP, His Holiness continues to preach tolerance and peace and forgiveness. He reminds us that even if the CCP takes your land, they cannot take away your culture. They cannot take away your spirit. And they cannot take away, they cannot take away what the Tibetan people mean to the rest of the world. <laughs> Yesterday I visited the Temple of Democracy here. You know, Chairman Xi says democracy doesn't work. But Chairman Xi is wrong. Democracy does work. For in democracies, people are free. Under tyranny, people are enslaved. Just this week, our delegation received a letter from the CCP warning us not to come here. They repeated their false claim that Tibet has been a part of China since the 13th century. But we did not let the CCP intimidate us, for we are here today. For the Dalai Lama knows that this is not true, that Tibet is part of China. And the people of Tibet know that that is not true. And the United States of America knows that that is not true. <laughs> the 
the Tibetan people possess a distinct religious, cultural, and historic identity. They should have a say in their own future. You should, and you should be able to freely practice your religion. And that is why we are here today in defiance of that warning. The timing of this visit couldn't be better. We are here just one week after the House of Representatives and the Congress passed the Resolve Tibet Act. This bill makes it clear the United States believes Tibet has its own unique language, religion and culture, and has a right to self-determination. The bill also requires the State Department to aggressively challenge CCP propaganda about Tibet. So along with my friend, Congressman Jim McGovern, who is also here today, and the author of the bill, I am proud to have sponsored this legislation, and I want to thank him for working with me to get this bill and Congressman Meeks on the committee to get this bill to the president's desk where it will be signed in the coming days. In my private meeting with His Holiness, I presented him with wind chimes that play America the Beautiful. I told him that wind cannot be seen, but it is a powerful force that is always present. My hope is that wind chime, this wind chime reminds him that even when our delegation leaves here, that America the Beautiful will support Tibet to remain a powerful force that is always present. You know, the Dalai Lama is a manifest manifestation of the Buddha of Compassion. It is said the original Buddha of Compassion chose to reincarnate so he could continue to serve the people for generations. I see that compassion not only in His Holiness, but in all of you, the Tibetan people. So thank you for having us, me and the delegation here today. And I'll, let me close by saying, to Che Che, thank you. Thank you, Representative McCall.